All right, folks, this time I wanted to address a topic that has been interesting me for a while, namely the question why Vikings never established a permanent settlement in North America. Most of you probably know about the archaeological evidence of a Viking settlement in lens au meadow on the Isle of Newfoundland, right here in Canada. And there's also historical evidence from the 13th century Icelandic sagas that also tell us about the same, so they confirm each other. So there's really no doubt about the fact that Vikings were in North America anymore at this point. But uh, the question is, why did they leave? So this has been puzzling me for quite a while. I was always wondering, yeah, why didn't they stay there? It's kind of odd. But in hindsight, it seems more obvious. Yeah, glorious hindsight bias. But uh, yeah, the main sources that I'm using for this is a lecture by Professor Kenneth Harl who teaches classes in Greek, Roman, Byzantine, and Crusader history at Tulane University in New Orleans. He uses various historical sources, like the, again, the Icelandic poems and sagas, those are always very good sources, uh, at least if you make sure to distinguish the more fictional parts of them from the parts that can actually be verified by other sources as well. Uh, he also used Arab geographies, Byzantine accounts, and a bunch of other things. And I've also drawn from the book Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond, professor of geography and physiology at the University of California, which uh, also touches generally on the issue of why certain groups did not manage to uh, conquer slash establish permanent settlements in uh, certain areas while others did. So myself, I'm not a historian. I studied archaeology for one and a half years, I think, but never finished that. And so I'm definitely not an expert, but I'm drawing on these sources. Uh, but if you have any other sources and uh, want to share your input, feel free to. But uh, please uh, provide arguments and, and don't just make random assertions. And uh, ideally, please quote your sources so that we get a better idea of things. So in the book I mentioned, Guns, Germs and Steel, Jared Diamond talks about the Spanish conquest of the Americas, among other things. And it becomes pretty obvious that the situation is a lot different. Like Spain in the 15th century and Norway in the 10th and 11th century were really quite different. I mean, Spain was very rich at the time. Norway really wasn't, even though there was some wealth coming in from Viking raids as well as trade. But uh, it's still not really a comparison. And the conquest received support from the king. Whereas in Viking times, it was really more of an individual endeavor. It was like a relatively small group of people who found what they called Vinland. And the Spanish crown had a lot of money to throw at this expedition. A lot more than Scandinavia would have to offer at that time. Which uh, means, well, a lot more support for the settlers, of course, which is uh, pretty essential. They also faced some practical problems in North America that they didn't really have in Iceland. Uh, Iceland has its own problems, mainly lack of resources. But at least it was easy in the sense that it was on unoccupied land. You could just basically get there and claim it and, and build your farm and there you go. But North America, not so much. They had some clashes with the natives. Uh, the very first encounter with the natives that you read about in uh, the saga is uh, rather unfortunate on the side of the Vikings. They basically notice those people and, oh, let's just kill them. <laughs> so uh, they, they kill seven out of eight, if I remember correctly, one escaped. So that was a great start. But uh, later they did actually trade with the natives. The only issue is um, there is one hypothesis. You can't really prove it. That's why it's a hypothesis. But um, the idea that they, they obviously traded milk and cheese with the natives. That's what's mentioned in the sagas. And uh, makes sense that they would do that. And uh, a while later the natives came back and were just furious and, and attacked them aggressively. And, uh, the hypothesis is that they simply were lactose intolerant, so they got very sick from that stuff, maybe some even died. And, well, their logical conclusion is those weird new guys try to poison us. And the Vikings didn't have a lot of the advantages that the Spaniards had later. Like, for instance, one of the decisive factors was actually cavalry, because the Incas and Aztecs weren't able to defeat cavalry in the open. They eventually figured out ways to uh, defeat them in ambush, but uh, in an open field, it's just cavalry is basically the tank of the time, and uh, Vikings weren't really keen on cavalry. As far as I'm aware, they never used cavalry in battle. Uh, it was only when they became Normans, and at that 
time they weren't really Vikings anymore. Also, of course, they didn't have firearms at the time, and also they didn't have steel breastplates like the Spaniards had. So they just armor wasn't all that common among Vikings anyway. They, if they could afford an iron helmet, they would wear that. If they could afford mail, but that was really just the richest. Like most Vikings basically had well, shield, weapon, and clothing for the most part. So the the difference between the two wasn't all that significant. So in that case, the superior numbers of the natives were actually more significant. And they were, according to the, the saga, they were definitely struggling. There's one amusing passage where there's fighting, that's not the amusing part, and uh, one of the Viking women becomes kind of pissed off at the guys because they retreat before the, the natives. They were becoming a bit too scary, apparently. And uh, she just picks up the sword from one of the fallen warriors and uh, whips out her boobs and slaps them with the sword. And the natives just basically look at her and go, holy shit, this is crazy, and just beat it because that was just... A little confusing. And then to top it off later, there was also an internal conflict among the settlers. So yeah, you didn't have only Vikings versus natives, but also Vikings versus Vikings. And the entire thing just really didn't work out so well. Those who returned basically told, yeah, we found this land and then it's, it's all nice and green and everything. And then there's grapes growing, which is awesome. But yeah, it's really the natives are giving us trouble and it's not really that easy. And there just wasn't really enough interest. So from what I understand, there was no permanent Viking settlement in North America, mainly because, well, for one, the payoff didn't seem high enough for the trouble they, they were dealing with. And uh, they could have some of the resources more easily, like lumber was very sought after. And uh, they just occasionally returned to Vinland in order to just chop down some trees, gather wood, and, and just get back without sticking around for too long. And uh, there were, easier targets, like Iceland and Greenland as well to an extent it may have seemed more feasible at the time, even though long term it didn't work out either. And they lacked more extensive support from the homeland in the form of goods and people. And uh, there was no centralized organization. It was really just a kind of individual endeavor. And another factor that also made it easier for the Spaniards than for the Vikings is the, the Spaniards were literate, which yeah, the Vikings had runes, but they just weren't really extensively used in the same way as the alphabet. And they didn't have extensive records, so meaning that it was all just word of mouth and uh, it didn't spread as much. Uh, when the, the conquistadores came back, or word from the conquistadores came back, uh, people you know, wrote entire books about the new world and it, it became a lot more popular, like the general population took an interest in that. So that seems to be the reason why it didn't work out. If you have anything to add, feel free to, and uh, hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.